brush and Alright, welcome back to another episode of Fresh and Buds. I am your host, Tommy Fresh. You are all of my buds, and today we don't have a guest. Well, you might be wondering why. Normally I have guests. I haven't done a solo episode in quite some time. Well, <clears throat> today was supposed to be the set review, and it's still coming. It is coming next week now, uh, last night, because of unforeseen circumstances i hit a snag in the editing so i've outsourced some help to get it all fixed for next week it'll be a lot of fun bill and i had a lot of of fun talking about outsiders and i hope that all you, all of you enjoy it you know unfortunately i would have caught that snag a little bit earlier but if you uh can't tell on the video i am in a new place i have moved which is very fun and exciting and uh, we have a new little studio, but it's been a busy two weeks, you know, since I recorded that. <clears throat> so I didn't even get a chance, sorry, I didn't even get a chance to edit it until last night. And, you know, hey, uh, things happen, but we're going to get that all fixed. And, uh, you know, we're going to have fun today. I could have easily just said, hey, no podcast this week. See you next week with the set review. But, uh, there's something wrong with me in the head and I wanted to do something and uh, I've been thinking a lot about Riptide uh, Who we are going to be talking about today and kind of my ideas here and and where I'm landing in terms of this this hero But uh, we'll get to that <clears throat> And uh, but you know first I want to well hope it hope everyone is doing very well And hopefully everyone's very excited for the pre-release this weekend. I am lucky enough to get to be able to make one and uh, it should be fun i can't i cannot wait it will be at koros war games in flemington new jersey uh, i always like to shout out any uh, lgs's out there and uh yeah very exciting uh limited is, is one of my favorite things and speaking of limited i want to shout out to the patreon now i haven't posted this yet but i might as well talk about it now because folks will be listening uh, on the patreon i am starting a new series that will be Available to watch anywhere, but it is going to involve patrons. Uh, it's going to be called <laughs> Cracking Six and Making Picks, right? It is, it is going to be a, a video series where I'll, I open up six packs of outs. Well, we're going to start with outsiders here. I'm going to open up six packs, and with a patron, I will be talking about. Well, you know, how do we feel about this? How do we feel about that? You know, you know, if you were to build this pool, how would it look? If if this was a draft, which would be your first pick? Yada, yada, yada. So that's going to be very fun. Uh, it's going to be available for any patrons, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, the only requirement will be, you know, have a, have a working mic. <clears throat> you don't need a camera because it'll be me on camera with uh, my setup here opening the packs, but we'll be chatting the whole time because well, you know I love to chat and and talk about the game and it'll be a lot of fun I'm very excited to do this because limited is one of my favorite things and we finally have another draft set with uh, limited capabilities and You know, I you know, I got to give a shout out to Gary Mr. Viz co-host of the Bud Rush Bellow uh, who 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 definitely uh, spearheaded this and thought it was a great idea. And I think he wants to chat with me a little bit about limited some more. But hey, you know, Gary, I get it. Now, <clears throat> uh, on the Patreon, you also get access to a bunch of other things. Bonus episodes, the Robin Club membership card, which I have mine right here. If, if you're watching on the video, it looks like this. It looks awesome. Shout out to the Bud Greg who had that designed. And uh, that gives you access to a patron only buds discord channel now the buds discord server is available to all I, I encourage anyone to check it out it's a very safe place for people to hang out talk about the game and other things we, you know we, we get all kinds of wild in there so check out that uh you check out the patreon and check out the youtube which you know if you're watching now you're already checking it out and if you aren't subscribed i i would appreciate if you do Trying to get to 500 subscribers because then I'm going to do a 
full adult Leviah cosplay. Like, I'm going to try to go all out. And Gary, Mr. Viz, is going to be the rabbit that uh, Leviah kills, uh, sacrifices in order to become, you know, tentacle Leviah. <clears throat> and it should be uh, should be fun. We're going to do that on our other podcast, our live podcast, which, unfortunately, with the move, I've had to take two weeks off of. But we'll be back next week with the Bud Rush Bellow, which is a live podcast that we do on the YouTube uh, 9.30 Eastern on Wednesdays. It's a, it's a blast. It is just, you know, Gary and I, we've, we've been friends for before either of us even knew Flesh and Blood was a thing. And uh, we, we kind of, uh, you know, get the big bud energy going. I mean, mostly it's, it's Gary making fun of me or, or me making fun of him. Uh, but uh, we, we have a blast. So uh, I recommend everyone check that out. It's a blast. And, and obviously, you know, you can on the YouTube, you can also catch this, this show which is the main show, the main attraction, Fresh and Buds. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, cool things coming. And, yeah, and uh, also one other thing, uh, my last article on Flesh and Blood's website the, for the Jumpstart series for, for kind of beginners uh, came out um, last night, if you're listening to this on Thursday. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talk a little bit about choosing your first hero you know how does your personality match these heroes and what they want to do and and how they want to play and even we'll talk a little bit about aesthetics right you know and speaking of aesthetics we're going to talk about riptide today <clears throat> so riptide is the new rangers now like i've never really had any interest in ranger right because well, it's just it's just not typically how I like to play. But then they they said, "Hey, we're gonna have this trap hero, like traps, like these traps from Crucible of War. Are they like they're gonna make them good?" And you know, we'll spoiler alert, but they kind of do, right? Uh, they change the way traps work, right? So in Crucible of War, and you know, they they still work this way for the Crucible of War ones, uh, which is believe uh rock slide trap pitfall trap and you're the third one right now but <clears throat> it's neither here nor there uh, one from each uh color so in crucible of war they had to be played from arsenal and they're going to continue to have to be played from arsenal for the crucible of war ones but all future printings of traps do not have that clause so you can play them from hand which all of a sudden makes them a lot better so uh, for 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 those of you who don't know, traps are are defense reactions that typically have a, uh, a kind of like a not an on hit but like an on play, right? You know, you play it and it has an effect. The original ones had an effect that would happen unless your opponent paid one to prevent that thing, right? In outsiders, we have traps that have an effect that triggers if it meets a certain criteria of the attack it's blocking so very interesting now in outsiders it kind of is limited to three different um uh kind of qualifiers to to make it trigger uh does the attack have go again it's pretty easy right does the attack have a higher attack power than its base attack power another easy one to hit and then the third one is a little bit more narrow is uh have has the opponent activated or played an attack reaction which is a little bit more narrow but there are heroes even within that set that care about attack reactions and you know hey listen uh, it's a great sideboard option i think so <clears throat> we're gonna get to to why traps are cool and why you know they're worth playing in my opinion and why riptide's worth playing and how i think riptide should be built now there's a lot of ideas flowing around right now in terms of how this deck can be built and i'll talk a little bit about everyone's ideas because i don't think any of these ideas are, are um, wrong right that's the beautiful thing about deck building is that you know you can you can throw a lot of things at the wall and you know, everything's going to be a little bit right somehow and everything's going to be a little bit wrong somehow. So we're going to kind of talk about that today and uh, it should be really interesting. Now, Riptide, <clears throat> uh, the reason I am so invested in this hero, right? As as the listeners know, I'm a big Leviathan. fan. Play a lot of Leviathan, But the 
The thing with Leviah is, and you know, <laughs> well, there's a lot of things with Leviah, but I did not get to experience Leviah from the get go. Right? I couldn't think about as as Monarch was getting spoiled. I couldn't think about the cards as they were kind of being introduced. So I kind of had to play catch up in terms of understanding how it's supposed to be built. And, you know, shout out to, to folks like uh, Man Sant, who, you know, really is a, a, a trailblazer for Leviah. And, I mean, obviously. So you have to look at, you know, folks that have already kind of done that work. And uh, that's great and all, but I am so invested in Riptide from an aesthetic point right big kind of gross looking dude i don't know almost looks like a brute right but you know but also like really strong powerful but like kind of like sickly still i think it very it's very interesting to me from an aesthetic point and the idea of traps is is very cool to me right you know booby traps right <laughs> i think you know everyone when they watch cartoons as a kid like you know there is always like talks of booby traps and stuff like that so it kind of unlocks that in my brain right hey like this is kind of cool i want to learn how to play it i don't really know ranger that well but you know i might as well learn because well <clears throat> i'm gonna have to uh, draft and play uh, limited with the set so i have to learn anyway but let's uh let's talk about riptide and 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 kind of like be able to kind of get in on riptide at the ground floor which is very exciting so <clears throat> let's uh let's bring him up here right i think this is the right one yes all right so we got riptide lurker of the deep which is also an amazing name now we're going to just be talking about cc here i don't play a lot of blitz and now i i do believe that riptide is probably a lot better in blitz just because of his abilities uh, but that doesn't mean, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to give the old college try and classic constructed here. So, first off, Riptide, Lurker of the Deep, 4 Intellect, yep, normal, 38 health. You know, this is this is a little bit of a, of, of a different life total. And usually that means that there is some power in the hero that makes up for it, right? You know, we see this with Icelander. We see this with Kano. You know, we, we see this with, with heroes. And I mean, like in, in Blitz, you see with KO, right? KO can, can you know, roll a six and have, a, uh, have like a 16 power swing big coming at you in a 20 health format, right? KO starts at 19. So usually... It is made like the the lack of life is made up for power so uh what is that power uh, i want to take a look at riptide's abilities first here so uh riptide's first ability is whenever you play a card from hand you may put a card from hand face down into your arsenal so what does this mean this is reload right we've seen reload on other ranger cards because well you know arrows have to be fired from arsenal and so did the old crucible traps but we'll get to that later whenever you put a card uh into your arsenal you are activating basically you're, you're automatically throwing a arrow into your arsenal if that's what you want to do with this deck so you play a sigil of solace a free life gain instant you play from hand you get to load something which is really cool already so there is a lot of inherent value and power in that ability. And I think it kind of gives us an idea of how we want to build Riptide in a way. Now, you know, you're like, Tommy, what about these traps? You keep talking about traps. This is the trap here. What does, what does Riptide have to do with traps? Now, his second ability is whenever a trap you control triggers, deal one damage to the attacking hero. So I mentioned that the new traps in this set all have a kind of circumstance or qualifier that it needs to meet in order for it to trigger. So if uh, one of them blocks, uh, I think, a, what a, you know, a, one of them that cares about go again, blocks something with go again, it will trigger. You deal one damage, which might not seem like a lot, but is, is, is a lot in, in flesh and blood. So uh, if anybody's been playing for a bit, reckless swing in brute deals two, as a defense reaction wins a lot of games right you're at two 
uh, you better be careful how you attack into brute, right? And and then also we have sigil of suffering, which is a rune blade defense reaction. Play it, deals one arcane damage. If it hits, it gets plus one defense. And and then we also have one of the probably one of the best ones, steel blade shunt, which is a warrior card that. Uh, defense reaction that when it blocks a weapon it deals one damage just like riptide now a lot of folks have lost to steel blade shunts so what does this mean <laughs> well you're getting you're adding on the one damage to traps that are already having relevant effects so there's a lot of power there so you know, I, I talk about these new traps that, that trigger on, on, on the qualifiers that they meet. The Crucible of War traps trigger no matter what because because they don't have a qualifier. Even if, if the opponent pays one, it still is going to hit with Riptide's ability. So, very, very cool here. I mean, you know, you start running, look, well, what do these traps do? You know, how, how are we going to, like, throw these in there? You know, you can't just run all traps. I mean, that would be, you know... Awesome if you could, but there's things like Kano that exist. And if you're not attacking with attacks, traps aren't really doing a whole lot. So these abilities kind of give us a, an idea of at least what a shell of Riptide wants to look like. You know, and, and, and some of this could be limited geared, but we're going to just look at it from a constructed uh, uh, idea. So first, the traps, you want to play them. So... In Riptide, he, is, he gets three legendary traps that are blue. And they all, you know, each one deals with the go again, the attack reactions, and the greater power than the base power. <clears throat> and they all have really powerful abilities. Um, one, of the, one of the first ones we saw was Collapsing Trap. That one cares about go again. And if it blocks something with go again, your opponent discards their hand and then draws that many cards minus one. Cards insane. So it's pretty low cost to play the blue ones, right? Because there's only one of their legendary. You're throwing those in there, I think, no matter what. No matter how you build Riptide. Because they have really great effects. And it's a blue, right? And it, was, and it still blocks for three, even if you don't meet the requirements, right? If you're playing, uh, I believe it's not Buzzsaw Trap. It is Spike Pit Trap, right? I'll bring it up right here. So this one cares about the uh, activated attack reaction. Or, or played an attack reaction. And uh, that doesn't always come up, right? But it's just, it's still a zero cost blue block for three at, at the end of the day. So there's no real negative cost there, right? You know, you just throw it in there. It's one, there's one of them. So what do these traps mean? When does the one damage matter? I think in, in general, I think we want much like steel blade shunts and reckless swings we want the one damage to matter late which is a great clue here in terms of uh the color of of these legendary traps right they're blue you're pitching them right you're pitching them you're hoping to get them late i i truly believe this you want these late you know they have uses in mid game early game with these really great effects but that being said i think you want them towards the end of the game to kind of help close out the game, right? Once you get into the single digit area, you know, each one damage is scary and your opponent has to really think about how they're attacking, what they're attacking with. Much like, you know, I mentioned with Reckless Swing and Brute. So let's go back to Riptide here. <clears throat> What's the other thing here? So the free reloads here kind of is a little bit harder to interpret. I think a lot of folks can look at that and say, hey, I want to play zero cost things from hand, reload a zero cost arrow, go again, whatever. And I think that's totally valid here. I think you can kind of play a red line version of Riptide now. It suffers from some things like, like any version of this deck I think does. And um, that is something to keep in mind. So. I think a lot of folks are looking at Riptide and like, well, this is this is a aggro deck, which it very well could be, but uh, I, I I'm coming to a different conclusion, and we're going to talk about that. So, 
the next thing I look at is well the life total, right? Well, it's two less life. It's not it's not crazy, right? You know, all you have to do is fire off two traps and it's pretty much equaling out, right? In in terms of uh, the value. So, with that being said, do you want to throw things in there that that cares about your life being lower? I mean, a great example that works in probably any version of this deck is Scar for a Scar, right? Classic card. We see it played in Icelander. We see it played in like a ton of different decks. Zero for four go again if you have uh, less life than your opponent. Boom. You know, it's a great way to start off the game with a Scar for Scar or even late game if, if you're willing to take some damage. So, you know, a, a, a Scar for a Scar into something else is is very good, right? Also loads when you play it from hand. Worth Worth noting. So... This is this is these are things that that kind of I looked at when I looked at Riptide. I'm like, okay, well, cares about traps, cares about reloads, cares about life total a little bit. And you know, once I saw that, and I think this is a good way to build any new new hero. Once I looked at those things, you, know, you look at their abilities, look at what it cares about. Next, we gotta look at context clues, right, within the set. So the biggest context clue you can get from a flesh and blood set where a hero has a card pool right <laughs> like any any limited set typically is well what is their signature weapon right uh you know you, you see um prism luminaris signature weapon made that deck run like butter right you know and i don't mean it just because butter is yellow that luminaris was uh the business in in prism now it doesn't always mean it is right so for, for example Leviathan's signature weapon is hexagore now hexagore is awesome and when it works is it's amazing but it doesn't always it's not def, it's definitely not the best choice so you got to keep that in mind but it's always a good starting point and i think riptide's signature weapon is a great starting point and riptide's first uh signature weapon is barbed castaway here so once per turn instant, you may pay one. Put an arrow card from your hand face up into your arsenal. Classic kind of ranger stuff here. And then also as once per turn instant, pay one. You may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up if you do put an aim counter. Now, it's worth noting that in Outsiders, we have two rangers you can play in limited. One of them is Azalea. So my initial thoughts here are the first line of text that pay, put a... Um, card into your arsenal face up is for azalea in limited it's it's something that still works in riptide but it's definitely there for that um, but the second piece of text because you when you do his first ability and reload you're putting it face down putting an aim counter on your your arrows is probably something that riptide wants to do so with that in mind i look at that and like well the arrows that Riptide wants to play want aim counters, right? You know, we're gonna we're gonna load them, we're gonna aim them, and we're gonna shoot them, right? Easy, easy enough, right? So that's that's an easy kind of uh, way to look at it. Now, there's some other, uh, you know, Sand Scour bow is is another bow that that puts aim counters in, but you know, that's that's kind of off my radar so i'm just looking at barb castaway so we look at that right okay this is this is this is the weapon we're just going to go with right you know we, we can try death dealer we can try dread boar whatever i'm i'm sticking with barb castaway it's his signature weapon signature weapon for a reason when he lls so is barb castaway it's going going the way of the dodo though i hear dodos are coming back but that's neither here nor there so that is the first context clue. Now, <clears throat> another context clue is, well, the aesthetics and flavor of Riptide. So, you know, Barb Castaway, obviously Castaway, very seafaring themed, Lurker of the Deep, Riptide, all seafaring themes. So we have a couple other cards here that I want to look at. And uh, we're going to look at two legendaries real quick. So first, um, our friend from Go Again Gaming, Az, got to spoil Quiver of Abyssal Depths. This is a clearly a very seafaring, like deep sea <laughs> uh, themed equipment. It is a quiver. We 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 now have quivers. So you can just play them with any 
any bow. Uh, and its ability is instant pay three, destroy it, shuffle up to three arrows with different names from your graveyard into your deck. So if I were to take this as a true context clue to what Riptide wants to do, it's telling me one thing. It wants to go into the long game, right? That's all it's really saying. You know, this is a great tool for uh, against fatigue for Ranger. But when I when I look at it for Riptide, I think Riptide might want to go very, very long. And Quiver kind of helps Riptide not die. You know, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it, right? You know, not lose to its own fatigue strategy. So that is something that I have kind of hung on to here. So, you know, I'm looking at Quiver of Abyssal Depth. I'm throwing it in the deck, right? It's It makes sense. It's on theme. It's on brand. And this is where I'm starting. <clears throat> Next card is Trench of Sunken Treasure, which is an amazing card. I think this is awesome. Ranger Equipment Chest has Blade Break, uh, has one defense, has Arcane Barrier 1. Great. And it has a once per turn instant. Put a face down card from your arsenal on the bottom of your deck. Gain one resource. So well, we're putting stuff face down with, with Riptide. And, you know, this helps you do many things, right? If you have to put a trap that you're not ready to use into your arsenal, you could just send it on its way. See you later until, until we get to the late game. You can... Uh, set up uh you know you can have a resource from arsenal on your turn kind of like maximize maybe maybe maximize a turn that didn't necessarily have a lot of of things going on uh you know like if, if you had to block with two cards and just just a little bit tight on resources send send your arsenal away and then one thing that it tells me is well sometimes you're going to want to clear your arsenal to be able to load something and, and and one of the things that makes me kind of think that or, or, or kind of conceptualize that as well what are some cards that loads things well we've talked about the the zero cost from hand that loads for for riptide and then there's also things like the codex of frailty and all the codexes right uh codex of frailty i think is pretty incredible i think all the codexes are pretty awesome and they kind of help Riptide throughout the game get to that end game where your opponent's a single digits. You have the traps. So Codex of Frailty is great at returning a uh, potential um, attack that, that's going to make it really tough for your opponent from your graveyard. You know, if you had something in your arsenal, you can't return it with the Codex of Frailty. You have to clear it first. So that's a context clue in terms of the equipment. Now, we talked about aim counters. Um, just looking at the set, what kind of arrows care about aim counters, the, the two that really stick out to me, or, you know, two or four, you know, based on what you, uh, how you, how you look at it is, <clears throat> uh, barbed undertow, which is a, a, uh, is a majestic and it cares about aim counter. If it has an aim counter comes in for five blocks for three. It gains when this hits hero, choose red, yellow, or blue until the start of your next turn. They can't pitch cards of that color. So I think this is another context clue here. Now, I don't know if this card is necessarily good enough in Riptide because it's it's tough to get evasion, but it is a potent on hit that they have to block, which we'll get to. It tells me that, well, you want to control the game, right? You know, this is, this is not fatigue control. This is control the game by by making your opponent's decisions very hard, right? And and things like Barbed Undertow, Blood Rot Pox from your Blood Rot uh, Codex, uh, Frailty Tokens, Inertia Tokens, make it tough for your opponent to maximize their turns, right? This is what Riptide is telling me. And, and Barbed Undertow is, is a great indicator there. Now, a, a card that I do think is worth playing and, and you might even want to look at all three of them. So there's a, a shot cycle in the set. There's infecting shot. There's a inertia shot, frailty shot. Uh, I forget the other th two names, but infecting shots, the, the, the real star of the show here, uh, you know, it comes in one for five, but it has the aim counter gets plus one. If it hits a hero, it creates a blood rot pox. The other two create inertia, frailty. Blood rot pox is just kind of a universal use card or token in terms of, well, you know, it's going to be two damage, right? For for those who don't know, Blood Rot Pox, 
end of your turn. Or get, you give it to your opponent at the end of their turn. They pay three or take two damage. So this is something that kind of helps you get to, to that end game, right? You're, we're all talking. We're, we're, we're kind of thinking about the plan now as we're looking through these cards and we're building this deck. So aim counters here on infecting shot and, and the other ones that are blue. The, the blues are great, right? Because they block three. And if they have the aim counter to come in for four, which is a nice little break point and have a relevant on hit. So that's worth noting. I, I, I play all the blues. Or at least maybe I do. No, you'll see. I do play all the blues. So <clears throat> this is a huge indicator, right? This is this is something that's totally worth putting a aim counter on. Now, if you loaded it with Riptide's ability, it's gonna it's gonna cost two to put an aim counter on and fire it. So you can you can kind of rest easy knowing that yellows are okay in this deck, right? A yellow pitching to 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 aim and fire totally fine you have no wasted resources there and you get to kind of play these really power yellows so here are our arrows reloads you know th this is this is something that kind of like blends into the trap thing so since the new traps can be played from hand you can load with the traps which is very cool um and you can also play sink below fate for scene these all load things in as well, which is which is very interesting. So with all that being said, I think that you can easily look at a hand <clears throat> that blocks with maybe one or two cards, right? And and in the process load something and then fire off something that your opponent cares about blocking. And if they don't and if they take it, they're gonna have to deal with the consequences of that. So uh, I want to look at good on hit arrows. I want to look at things that load and I want to look at things that also, um, you know, get you to the end game and kind of maybe even keep you alive, right? That's like the most important thing. You got to stay alive to the end game as well. So, uh, you know, the, because that's where the traps come in. So I think that there are, <clears throat> in terms of playable traps, I think the blue ones are playable. I think the the blue Crucible of War one, Rock Slide, is playable, and I think all the yellows are playable in in their own right. Now the reds. So in 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 Outsiders we have a cycle of reds, block for three. They're actually Assassin Ranger cards, hybrid. And if they meet the requirements, you get a Blood Rot Pox, Inertia, or Frailty. Certainly good. The Blood Rot Pox would have been the most powerful, but it only cares about attack reactions. So, in in my opinion, I think that they're a little bit below rate, and like it's a red that kind of clunks up your hand, and and you know, if you are clunking up your hand, you want to be able to you want to be able to pitch them, right? And I think a yellow and a blue is where you want to be. Now, the 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 yellow ones are rare in Outsider, so you know you get. Uh, let me let's bring it up. Actually, let's bring it up. I have my list here. So the yellow ones are. Tar Pit Trap, which cares about go again. Next time an attack action card hits this turn, effects don't trigger. That is um, something uh, that it could be very relevant. Something like Ninja has a lot of go again, and 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 you know even Briar stuff like that, right? Boulder Trap. This one's awesome. Defends an attack with uh, attack power greater than its base. Put in minus one. Defense counter on equipment the attacking hero controls. Insane. And then finally, Pendulum Trap. A little bit more narrow, but still quite good. Kind of helps you get to the plan of kind of getting your opponent to get a little fatigue a little bit, right? If it defends an uh, uh, attack that in your re reaction has been activated, you put the top two cards of their deck into their graveyard. So you kind of mill a little bit. So, all that being said, I think those are the playable ones and the blues, and then also uh, the Crucible War yellow and blue, right? So Pitfall Trap, I think, is is a real all-star in this deck. Uh, it has the potential to deal three damage the turn you play it. It's always dealing one when you play it, and uh, it has the ability to deal two more if your opponent does not choose to pay one. So all this being said, let me show you where I landed. So the yellows and the blues are there because they have really relevant or uh, abilities and 
they're easy to pitch to the late game, right? You know, it's harder to pitch a red, right? To, to kind of make this deck home. You want to think about that when you build this deck. You, like, you can't just throw something in because it's good. It has to, to actually contribute to the plan. So pitch your traps early. Get them on your second cycle and stay alive. How do you stay alive? Well, you play sink blows and you play fate for scenes, right? And... Oasis Respite, which is a neat little card that can load, and you can pit, uh, cycle your arsenal with Trench to, to play. Gains you life. And in terms of gaining life, since you're behind on life, so I already mentioned Scar for a Scar, and you know, I'm, I'm taking taking a note from Icelander's notebook here. I think you want to play Wounded Bull, because you can play those really good blue arrows with block three, and pitch a blue for coming in for eight. Sounds great to me. Something good that you can return with Codex of Frailty late game as well. And then also, we have both the yellows and the reds of Finals Fighting Spirit, which are uh, another good card if you, you plan on being behind on life. Now, you know, if if you get ahead, that's great. You know, you're not going to get the bonus of gaining the life. Uh, the red, at least, is still coming in for seven, which is a nice little break point. CNC is another card here that initially i'd even put in but then i was like this is pretty insane so something you can do with codex of frailty right is if you have a blue and codex of frailty you can pitch the blue to activate bow for nothing which sounds like not good but you have two resources floating you play the codex you return your command and conquer and they have a your opponent has an arsenal already or they will have to and if they do have one or if, if they have to return from their graveyard they're gonna have to discard a card you have no cards left in hand so you don't even have to discard so you codex of frailty you fire off your commanding conquer that you just got from your graveyard and they have to make a decision right they either had less cards or you know they have to look at this frailty token that makes their attack that's in there a lot less potent as well as their their weapons so something really neat now let's talk about the arrows you know we have Endless Arrow, this is kind of your end game, right? You know, this is something that Riptide can't necessarily <clears throat> make uh, full use of, you know, like some other heroes, like Lexi, you know, th this is one of Lexi's favorite cards. And, you know, Azalea obviously can just like dominate this and, and, and go wild. <clears throat> Riptide, uh, not necessarily the best card that Riptide could be playing. But that being said, uh, it's good in the end game, and it's also something that you can load and just shoot off for free, which is very nice. And um, in the end game, you know, because it's going to eat two cards, right? And you're you're, you're trying to fatigue them. It's like a, almost like a turbo fatigue deck, right? And that's kind of what you want to look at it as. You know, you're you're not dirtling around like your oldums and stuff like that. You're you're actually doing things to make this this um this fatigue plan kind of you know pick its pick its feet up a bit so endless arrow for the end game and a totally fine zero for four arrow uh next we have <clears throat> remorseless now this deck this card was not initially in there and then i was like oh, why not this is a relevant on hit right um actually this was barbed undertow before it was remorseless relevant on hit um relevant ability when you activate your bow to put it face up defense reaction can't be played from arsenal to remorseless's chain link and then if it hits and i think you know remorseless is most likely to hit the most in this deck i think because your opponent's like well whatever i want to play out my turn and i'll take the damage now they might not even realize it but you're that's what you want them to do take the five and maybe take two more or three more on your turn right with with the uh with remorseless's on hit that says until the end of their next turn whenever they play an action card they'll lose a life so this is all stuff that's going to help you get to the end game uh mention scar for scar we have the full um kind of codex cycle going on here possible that some of them get cut but i just kind of like them because the ponder tokens are so good and you know the codex of frailty token is maybe the worst but the effect is the best inertia really comes up more than you think and blood rot pox obviously is just great so it all kind of contributes to that plan and then i have infecting shot as as a nice um you know dangerous 
red arrow to to worry about and i also have the blues of all the shots so the blue infecting shot the blue sedation shot that's what it was called i'm sorry i blinked on it earlier and the blue withering shot which is uh where it is so this is kind of like the plant right this is nothing flashy right i, I i've noticed a lot of folks and i uh, for good reason they want to build the craziest version of this deck possible because it's a brand new hero and <clears throat> and i think that um that is not wrong but i think we can also just kind of take a step back and kind of say hey listen we are blocking and tackling here this is just classic flesh and blood hey i'm gonna i'm gonna just i'm gonna slow down i'm gonna block a little bit i'm gonna get some cool little trap things going i'm gonna pitch stack a bit and and i'm just gonna just throw some attacks that you have to actually think about dealing with you know you know now like finals fighting spirit and wounded bull are not, not necessarily things that they have to think about but it's a lot of damage so a a a scar for scar into one of those is is a, a really great turn so anyway this is this is all the things that have been on my mind and i just wanted to talk about it and it, unfortunately the 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 set review got pushed to next week we don't have the release till next week anyway so it's it's all good but i i i wanted to get on and talk to the buds here for for this week's podcast it's not going to be as long as normal but i hope you enjoyed and and kind of enjoyed my thoughts on 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 the riptide deck i will post the deck link in the show notes and you know i i hope everyone has a great time at the pre-release a lot of fun talking about riptide I, I really do love this hero and and I'm, I'm very passionate uh about kind of like figuring out what is right for this hero, and and I'm, I'm willing to be wrong and i don't know if you know this i don't even run new horizons or anything like that um i mean i run the cross strap in the cyborg because it's ab but i'm on arcanite skullcap because well they start lower life and that's that's just basic flesh and blood stuff going on here from when i started in the game you, you just ran skullcap right and this is like a better reason to run it because hey listen you're starting in a lower life anyway so and it has ab3 sometimes it comes up uh more than you think so uh all that being said i i i hope this was somewhat enlightening for for all of you and and uh you know hey i'll, I'll be i'll be doing more stuff with with riptide i'm hoping to do some kind of gameplay at some point when 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 things kind of calm down with this move you know get settled into this this new place here and uh new casa de fresca as they say and i, I hope everyone has a, a great weekend uh, I want to continue to shout out the Patreon, which I'm really excited to launch the new video series for the YouTube, but will involve the patrons, the Cracking Six and Making Picks. I mean, that's, that's a pretty pretty fun name. Um, and and it should be awesome. Check out the Patreon. Check out the Buds Discord. It's the best. It really is. I, you know, I, I, I adore the Buds and, and, and everyone in there. And YouTube like comment subscribe i want to do the leviathan cosplay i don't know if i want to but it's the greatest giveaway of all time right it really is it's my humiliation for your entertainment it's great and we're going to do another giveaway you know um probably in conjunction and then another one at 750 just want to get there want to build up the youtube so help out if you can and uh yeah i hope everyone has a great week i'm looking forward to you enjoying the set review next week i'm sorry that it was not today but i want to uh to talk anyway i'm crazy ah! but <laughs> so everybody uh please have a great weekend enjoy your pre-releases and be good to each other and have fun